So, they've found it again, have they? I thought we'd taken care of it. The uh, forces of evil are persistent, sir. I'm getting too old for this. Who have we got lined up to deal with this problem? Uh, Murphy, sir. Oh, no, not Murphy. Afraid so, sir. What about Spade or Marlowe? Uh, dead, sir. Isn't there anyone else? Sorry, sir, he's next on the list. Well, I suppose we'll have to make do. Knowing Murphy, he's going to need help. A lot of help. I'll check the archives and get back to you, sir. News of the day. As the Second World War enters its final days, Allied forces are on the march. The troops of the Western Alliance are occupied with the dangerous duty of ferreting out the remaining pockets of Nazi resistance. The storming of Berlin has crushed the heart of German opposition and sent remnants of the Fuhrer's troops scurrying into the dark reaches of the Black Forest. The Germans have vowed to fight to the last man in their quest for world domination. But their days are numbered, with Adolf Hitler dead and the once dreaded SS disbanded. The Allies have exposed the workings of the Nazi war machine and found it festering with ancient blood cults, whose rituals and ceremonies are too astonishing and barbaric to detail. Allied forces will not rest until the last cult member has been revealed and captured. No pestilence has ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood was its avatar and its seal, the redness and horror of blood. New San Francisco sparkles like a chunk of cubic zirconium, an island of hollow beauty surrounded by a red sea of radiation. Five million souls drowning in gamma rays. Some lucky people have a natural immunity to genetic mutation caused by the radiation. I'm one of them. Most of them live in the new city, but I don't. I live among the unlucky souls, the mutants and the destitute and the wreckage of old San Francisco. My name's Tex Murphy. I'm a private detective, or at least I used to be. Since my marriage hit the rocks, I haven't done much of anything. I went out tonight for the first time in a week, but all I ended up doing was spending the last of my money on a bottle of cheap bourbon. Now it's past midnight, and I'm staring out of the window of my office on the second floor of the Ritz Hotel. Just like me, the Ritz used to be something. Now it's just another grimy building in a rundown part of town. And I'm almost out of bourbon. My God, Murphy, you look like hell. Really hit bottom, didn't you? <laughs> oh, I usually don't look this bad. I forgot to take my Geritol this morning. 
So, you want a drink? I saved my first one to have with you. No, thanks. I've been dry for eight years now. Yep, one morning I just looked in the mirror and decided I needed to make a few lifestyle changes. Quit smoking, quit drinking. Now I'm getting out of the business. Yep, I'm going to move to the tropics and retire in a nice secluded island with a tribe of beautiful young women. You're getting out of the business? I guess that means the end of the world must be around the corner because you are the detective. I can't imagine you doing anything else, especially not running around an island with a bunch of nubile women in a loincloth. No, I can imagine it. I've been thinking about it for years now. Yeah. You know how it is. Lonely. Underappreciated. Dangerous. I haven't had a decent night's sleep in 38 years. I tell you, I'm working on a case right now, and that's going to be my last one. Oh. Enough about me. How about you, Tex? How's life treating you? Bad as it looks? <laughs> well, it depends. What day is it anyway today? Saturday? Well, Saturdays aren't too bad. It's normally Thursday by the time I get really suicidal. So what is it you wanted? Just come by to sprinkle a little salt into the uh, open wounds of my pathetic life? No, 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 Tex, you got me all wrong. <laughs> no, just because you turned me in and got me suspended and humiliated me in front of my peers. You sold me out! <laughs> but that's all in the past. See, I quit hating you for that weeks ago. Eh, like I said, I'll be leaving soon. And I didn't want to go with any loose ends dangling there to bother me in my golden years. <sighs> hey, don't worry about me. When you tossed me out of the agency, it was the best thing that ever happened. Digging through dumpsters and sleeping in abandoned speeders. You helped me learn a great lesson. Because no matter how bad things are, they can always get worse. So what happened to you? I heard you were doing pretty well there for a while. Did I help a job on that Martian memorandum case? What's your problem? You one of those people who can't live with success? Huh? Well, I can live with it. I'm just afraid of commitment. Now you tell me something. Why wouldn't you talk to me 15 years ago? I was a stupid kid back then. Could have tried to understand why I told the ethics board what I did. I mean, I understand now that I was out of line and I made a mistake, but why'd you cut me off like that? Because apparently you never learned the first rule of a P.I. And never, ever, betray your friends. Now, friendship goes beyond blood and race and politics. You gotta find out who your friends are, then you hold on to them. They're a precious commodity to people like me and you. Now listen, before I go, I came here with a warning. I heard your name mentioned in connection with a case that I'm working on, and you stay out of it. If you don't, somebody's gonna find you floating in the bay with a hole in your head. I don't need any more strain on my conscience. You know, frankly, I'm pretty insulted. Because I'm a pretty damn good detective. And I can take care of myself, thank you. No! Let's remember what I said, Tex. Got no idea what kind of people we're dealing with here. Just keep out of my way. I'll send you a postcard. So last night, after 15 years, the colonel walks into my office. Made me take a good hard look at myself. Maybe I have hit bottom, and maybe I do look like hell. Lord knows the only exercise I've had lately is tipping the bottle and flipping cards into my hat. I gotta find some work. Contrary to what the colonel might think, I'm as good a detective as he ever was. Now I just gotta prove it. I'm gonna scare up a job today, even if it means finding somebody's lost puppy.
All I've ever needed was a soft felt fedora, a well-tailored overcoat, and a comfy pair of sneakers. Some people know what they like and they stay with it. Great-great-grandpa Murphy made it through the Depression by teaching cha-cha lessons to rich older women. He made thousands before the authorities found out he had no formal training. Old trusty sidearm. Been with me since the beginning. You want some of this, huh? Bam, bam! Hey, bam, bam, bam! Bam! Bam, bam! Bam! And you! Hey! Hey, Sonny, can you help me out? My girlfriend threw my gun out of the window. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, just pick it up and, uh... Hey, don't... Don't point that thing up here. That's not a toy, you know. Oh, my hell. No matter how bad things got, I always had my gun. Now I've lost that, too. I have a feeling this is going to be one of those days. Oh boy, mail. Oh boy, mail. This pure mountain spring water is indispensable, literally. I'm out of paper cups. Things look pretty slow on the street today. The office was actually a dance studio before I moved in, and Latin dancing is a Murphy family tradition. That's a perfect bed for a destitute PI. Small, lightweight, no sheets required. I call this painting, uh, The Big Spill. Well, since the building inspector has only one eye and no depth perception, the hotel manager painted fire extinguishers in all the apartments. It saved him a bundle. That hutch holds a life's worth of knickknacks, patty wax, and the world's largest piece of elbow macaroni. This piece of art is called Two Whales on a Bender. This one really isn't art, it's a placemat from Taco Bob's. Crimelink computer is the only valuable piece of equipment left in the office. By entering suspect information like height, weight, and hair color, I can access the suspect's personal files. Ah, I spent weeks earning this baby. Best 20 bucks I ever spent. The UI of U was the only place that would accept me. Half the course credit was earned by locating the university. Oh great. Another incoming message that won't print out. If I don't get a new fax machine, I'll be out of business. Ah, nothing here but nostalgia. Nothing in here. This here is my favorite desk drawer. As usual, it's a mess. Toxic Taste is a novel by Lou G. Trundle, the only mutant popular enough to make the New York Times bestseller list.
My phone had worked perfectly if it hadn't been disconnected. Hip-hop English keeps me up on all the slang kids are using today. World War IV. A dark and reactionary vision of the coming century by Rush Limbaugh III. As usual, it's as usual, as usual. Ah, the fabulous Dior lamp. I bought it for seventy-seven cents. Ah, the fa. Ah, Sylvia, my ex-wife. Whenever I think things can't get any worse, I think about her and how she totally screwed up my life. She's a woman who loves a man, any man, any time. I'll never forget the day I came home early and caught her with the upholstery man. Oh, there you are. I just got done with the chair. I'll be sending the bill to your husband. Oh, Rudy. Let's not think about my husband right now. I was, I was watching you upholstery and you're so big and strong. Do you really think so? Well, yes. God, I've only known you for ten minutes and I feel like... I've known you forever. Oh, yes, look. And look at this muscle. Oh. The way you hold me, Tex, Tex never held me like this. <clears throat> oh, kiss me, Rudy, and set my lips on fire. Okay. Oh, Tex, honey. I wasn't expecting you home so soon. Well, duh. Obviously. Now I know why the Rota Rooter man keeps calling and asking whether we need our plumbing checked. Well, I got to admit, those chairs look pretty good. Uh, thanks. Listen, how about I don't charge you on the labor and we call it even? Fair enough. But from here on out, Rudy, customer servicing doesn't include my wife. See, honey? I saved you some money again. Aren't you happy? I married her for better or worse. Unfortunately, it never got any better. My phonograph's an old family heirloom. I love to play the classics. Cool and the Gang, Peaches and Herb. The air outside feels thick, like I'm breathing through a pair of dirty gym socks. It's a high radiation day, most everyone will be staying inside, but I need to hunt for some work. I always like to start the day with the traditional P.I. breakfast. Mmm, <coughs> that hits the spot. Chelsea Bando's the kind that could hold her own with anyone, but she has a way of turning my knees to jelly. She's a mutant, just like everyone else in this part of town, but she's a real beauty. Well, hello, stranger. Hey, sweetheart. Know anyone who could use my services today? <laughs> well, I guess that depends on which services we're talking about, big guy. Well, duh. I guess you forgot. I'm a P.I. Well, you know, Tex, you just might have a chance to show how good a P.I. you are. Had you heard that Rook's place got robbed? Yeah, I did. Actually, I came by to see what you know about it. Yeah, you know, I remember Rook told me about the burglary. You know, I remember a stranger hanging around the past couple of days. It might be a dead end, but I seem to remember that the guy had these bright green eyes and a tattoo of an anchor on his arm. Wish I could help you there, Tech. 
Luckily, Ardo seems to like me. I mean, if I were on his bad side, I'd be tempted to relocate. He could crush a Subaru with one hand. Sal's a handful. I mean, he's a nice guy, but I don't know, I feel kind of naked when he gives me the eye. Franny's a live wire. Either she or Sal is going to do time for killing the other one. I have never seen a couple fight like they do. I love Louie, but his friendliness doesn't fool me. He's a sharp one. He knows everything that's going on in this neighborhood. Oh, you know me, Tex. I'm just making ends meet. Rook acts like a tough guy, but he's a softy. Just don't tell him that to his face. Just a couple of empty old packing boxes. Hmm. Ooh, a small nozzle. Probably a helium dispenser used for filling balloons. Why, it's Mr. Sloppy Lasagna Eater! Cool. A plastic dark crossbow. It'll make a nice addition to my non-violent weapon collection. Looks like some kind of in-house television. Hi kids, it's me, Inspector Burns. And as we all know, fire can be our friend, but fire can be our foe. So many times, fire starts so carelessly. And what can fires do? Fires burn you. Never, never light matches. No, no, no. Fire is dangerous. Fire made me look like this. Do you want to look like me? No, no, no. Don't look like Inspector Burns. Don't play with matches. Uh, Inspector Burns. I always thought he was a freak, but the kids love him. So does Ardo. These weapons are all made of plastic. All bark and no bite. They're completely useless. This wig probably sells well during the Bay Area Yodeling Festival. Whoa! For a second there, I thought someone had decapitated Inspector Burns and left his head on the floor. What a great mask. Well, I have no idea what I'd ever do with a stacking ring, but what the heck. Can't get over how lifelike this doll is. If it didn't have a hook on the back and a battery compartment, I'd swear it was Rusty himself. Hmm. Maybe this key fits in that employee's only door. Oh, lordy. Well, this is where Rusty ended up. What a way to go. And I'm willing to bet he didn't crawl in here on his own. Someone murdered him. A plastic suction dart can be formidable ammo in the hands of an expert like myself. Posters in here tell you more than you'd ever care to know about film processing. A balloon strategically located near the water faucet. Looks like Rusty didn't go down without a fight. Well, that's not gonna work.
Well, that's not. I had a set of stacking rings just like this one when I was a little P.I. Hmm. Even has a small hole in it, just like the rings I had. Man, fill one of these with water and you can chuck it a mile. Well, that's not... Well, that's not... Well, that's not... Well, that's... The sink must have been used for developing... Well, that's not gonna. Well, that's not. Well, that's not. I heard this newspaper box got destroyed right after Chelsea opened her newsstand. Coincidence? Yeah, looks like someone's locked the door. And there are signs of radioactivity everywhere. Francesca Lucido makes the spiciest pizza in the city. The only thing spicier than her cooking is her imagination. And right now she seems to have a thing for me. This is where Louis throws out the garbage. Street people come from miles around to sample Louis's award-winning leftovers. Nothing in here. This is the brand new electronic shop outlet. No pun intended. I won't be able to get inside the electronic shop until I get a membership card. Now all this baby needs is a stamp. The Postal Service has gotten much faster since the stamp price went to $10. I should get my credit card back tomorrow morning. On the top floor of this place is where I hang my hat. It's not much, but it's better than... Well, it's not much. Bijou Theater used to be quite a night spot. It was condemned years ago and could collapse any day. There's no way I'm going in there. What can I do for... That old wooden fence blocks off the alley that runs beside Rook's Pawn Shop. Rook Garner runs this Rook Garner runs this pawn shop. He's a crusty old World War III vet with a face like a raisin and a tongue like a butcher's cleaver. What do you want, Miffy? Fine. How you doing, Rook? I'm not in the mood for small talk. Fine. What do you want to talk about? Let me tell you about my great day, Murphy. Last night, someone broke into my pawn shop. I don't usually have anything of great value, but yesterday, I gave out a fair amount of cash for an extremely valuable diamond bracelet. How much is a fair amount of cash? In this case, $8,000. Boy, that's a lot of clams, Rook. Don't you think I know that? The bracelet was pawned by a young girl named Emma Nimpton. She said she hated to hawk a family heirloom, but had no choice. She said she would reclaim the bracelet in a month. 
Well, since the bracelet was worth ten times eight thousand I loaned her, it was a good deal for me. I think you've been played for a sap, Rook. Maybe. She left me a number and I called it this morning, but the line is disconnected. Sounds like my vast experience as a P.I. could come in handy. Yeah, it couldn't hurt. The police are no help. A mutant is on his own when he gets robbed in this town. I'd appreciate your help. I'm not a rich man, but if you find the bracelet, I'll owe you a few favors. Which could come in handy. Come back here and I'll show you where they broke in. Rook takes me out back and shows me where the burglar broke in. The back window is busted out and the latch is ripped. It's a sloppy job. As I start my investigation, I'm looking for information to enter into my crime link computer back at the office. One thing's for sure, Emma Nimpton won't be one of the suspect's names. Every P.I. worth his salt knows that's not my name spelled backwards. Hmm. Looks like a key of some kind. The baby rum wrapper looks like it was left recently. Yep, still warm. Ten seconds left. Down by one. Murphy has the ball. He fakes. He drives. It's a 360. He's fouled. This old relic probably hasn't worked in years. Hey, there are batteries in here. Well, I'll be darned. Except for the filth and stench, the interior isn't much different than the average studio apartment. In fact, it's nicely furnished. Someone's been living here, and I wonder if he saw anything. Oh, I would love to see my ex-mother-in-law squeeze through there. The empty bottles of chocolate syrup lying all around this alley all look like they've been licked clean. Well, that steep staircase looked really hard to climb. Wow, a recyclable paper can. Finally, a glimmer of ecological responsibility. I didn't know Rook cared. Wow. Hey, this door's just painted on. Yeah, what do you want? I'm looking for some information regarding the robbery at Rook's last night. Well, there are thieves everywhere. Someone just stole my radio. Sure, it was busted, but it was all I had. Man, who would stoop to robbing the homeless? Whoever it was must be a real jerk. Boy, you said it. Now why don't you get lost? I've got to look for my radio. Oh, looks like Mr. Bum is home for the evening. Oh no, not you again. Look, I'll warn you right now, I'm almost out of chocolate syrup and I'm not in a good mood. You know, I just might have something that would improve your ugly mood. Is that so? Well, what? Louis Laments runs the Brew and Stew, which is a local hangout. The Brew and Stew is run by Louis Laments, a bloated mutant with a heart bigger than his waistline. 
Everyone comes to Louie's cafe. So does all the street talk. If something's going on, Louie knows about it. What can I do for you, Mike? Nothing for me, Louie. I just dropped by to chat. Okay. What's on your mind? You don't know anyone who's in need of a highly skilled P.I., do you? Sorry, Mife. Only bumbling, half-witted P.I.s are in demand around here. <laughs> you want to try a slice of my chocolate pie? I can get you a piece to go if you like. Rook told me about the bracelet. But I don't know anything more about it. Rook's been robbed before, but he's never had anything really valuable taken. This is gonna set Rook back for a while. Too bad the cops have turned a blind eye. Sorry, Mife. Can't help you there. Fido comes in now and again. Usually orders a couple of steaks and a chocolate milk. His temp is as short as he is tall. And he's only got one oar in the water. A bad combination. Sal's a big guy with an appetite for food, wine, and women. He comes by here most every day for lunch. Granny's a fireball. She and Sal opened the pizza place seven or eight years ago, and they've been fighting ever since. Yeah, things are a little slow, but I'm getting by. Having to lay off some of my kitchen help hurt my pride more than anything. Chelsea acts tough, but she has to be with all the scum around. And she's as smart as she is pretty. She knows a lot of what goes on in the shadows of this city. Rook's an ornery old cuss, but me and him are old buddies. We fought in the big war together. He's one person you can trust in these troubled times. Well, that's not good. Praise heaven! You brought the ambrosia of life! Ask me anything you want! Wish I could help. I saw someone prowling around the back of the pawn shop last night. It was so dark, I didn't get a good look at him, but I could tell he was huge. Probably 6'3 or 6'4. About 300 pounds. Oh, don't know a thing about it. I saw someone prowling around the back of the pawn shop last night. It was so dark, I didn't get a good look at him, but I could tell he was huge. Probably. The only time I ever see Sal is when he gets drunk and comes by to pick a fight. Then I kick his butt and send him on his way. That big goon, he used to hassle me until I shared a quart of chocolate syrup with him. Now he lets me alone. I don't have much to do with her. They don't serve anything with chocolate in it at the pizza joint. Nice guy, good cook. Every national feed a bum day, he brings me one of his award-winning chocolate pies. Ugh. I think Chelsea used to fancy me, until she found out my only true love was chocolate. Damn near broke her heart. Brooke, he leaves me alone. Can't ask for more than that. Hi, 
Yeah, you know, I remember Rook told me about the burglary. You know, I remember a stranger hanging around the past couple of days. It might be a dead end, but I seem to remember that the guy... Coit Tower was once a majestic landmark. The wiener stand on the patio at the base of Coit Tower made the best chili dog in town. No one's here right now, though, so I better check back later. Ardo Newpop is a gigantic goon who works at the front desk at the Golden Gate Motel. Ardo's no rocket scientist. In fact, he probably doesn't even know what a rocket scientist is. My name's Tex, and I'm a PI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Okay. I think I've already seen this show before anyway. Captain Wallaby, your favorite show? It's my third favorite show. My favorite is the Inspector Burns Fire Safety Show. <laughs> Why is that your favorite show? Because fire safety is very important, and I want to grow up to be just like Inspector Burns. Well, I'm sure Inspector Burns would be thrilled. Can I ask you some questions? Okay. I can answer some questions, but first I have to put on my fire hat because Inspector Burns' fire safety show is going to be on pretty soon. I don't know what that is. I never heard nothing about that. I, I just want to be like my hero, Inspector Burns, because fire safety is very important. I never heard nothing about that. She's the lady who makes the best pizza. I eat at her pizza place all the time because I love it. He's a nice guy and I like to eat there because there's a TV. Ooh, Chelsea is pretty cool because she's got good magazines and stuff. That's where I bought my Inspector Burns Fire Safety Manual. I went to his pawn shop because I thought he would have Inspector Burns action figures, but he didn't, and I got mad at him, so he probably don't like me. Well, that's not gonna work. Yeah, looks like...
Yeah. Looks like someone's locked. Yeah. Let's. So, Murphy, have you come up with anything yet? I've got some clues, but I need some more information from you. It was a beauty! Ah, encrusted with diamonds and rubies and inlaid with gold. It makes me mad as hell that someone will break into the shop. I have a hard enough time making ends meet. I don't know anything about that. Strikes me as a village idiot. He came by one time to see if I had any Inspector Burns action figures. I told him I'd never heard of these Burns characters and thought the kid was gonna tear my damn head off. Strikes me as a village... Sal's a brute. Funny as hell, but he can get pretty bad after a couple of drinks. He and his wife Franny have a real love-hate thing. Makes me glad I never tied the knot. Sal leaves running the pizza joint up to Franny. Franny's a hot-blooded gal. She and her husband Sal wake up the neighborhood sometimes with their rows. Louie and I go way back. We ran guns to Ethiopia before World War III, then fought in the same regiment during the war. After the war, Louie opened the brew and stew and told me about this shop, which I bought for a song, and then I started my own pawn business. She's a honey, ain't she? Makes me wish I was 30 years younger. She knows the black market and has helped me make some <coughs> connections. That depends on whether you're here to help me or to irritate me. Ask away. Sorry. I saw. Quite tell. I heard the Golden Gate Hotel was once known as the Waldorf of the Pacific. Its halls are still sturdy, and the walls have worn well. But there's nobody living inside. I heard that Ardo shuts the place down every once in a while to do fire safety upgrades. Maybe he's painting fire extinguishers in all the rooms. Well, well, it's that a handsome P.I. Tex Murphy. <laughs> Have you come to take me away? I would if you weren't so married. Actually, I might anyway if you help me out. Oh, how exciting. And what may I do for you? Can't help you, Tex. 
I heard that Rock's place got robbed. It scares me to death. There's so much crime in this part of the city. So... Ardo is an overgrown kid. He comes in here for the all-you-can-eat buffet, and I've got to kick him out every time. If I didn't, he'd eat everything we got. Ardo is an overgrown... Me and Sal got married too young, and it's been up and down ever since. I've had enough of his drinking and womanizing, and I divorce him in a second, but he's got a couple of buddies who are top lawyers. If I had some hard evidence of his screwing around, I could divorce him and get a decent settlement. Well, I was hoping you'd get around to asking about me. I'm just a lonely, hot-blooded woman who needs the love of a good, strong man. I like Louie. He runs a nicer place, and I go over there and chat with him when the business is slow. Chelsea is a nicer girl. Sal tries to flirt with her, but she doesn't give him the time of day. Rook is a tough old geezer. I've known him ever since we opened the Slice of Heaven back in the 32, but I can't say I know him very well. On the top floor of this place, These fire hydrants are commonly used by the locals to mark territory in front of their respective business establishments. Looks like whoever broke into Rook's window left one of his hairs behind. Apparently our burglar is a carrot top. Looks like a shoe print is outlined in that sticky pool of something resembling chocolate. Footprints about a size 14. Looks like a shoe print is outlined in that sticky pool of something resembling chocolate. Footprints about a size Coit Tower was... Yeah. Yeah. Looks like... Some 
Well, that's not... What else can I? I don't know anything about. I don't know any. I don't know. Ask away. Oh, sorry. Wish I could help. Chelsea. Big. If you want to talk to him, you might try hanging out around Coit Tower. Ah, oh, I remember Rusty. He had a kid show on TV when I was young. I hated the show. That clown makeup oof, always scared me. I walk up the steps to Coit Tower and spot a small figure lurking in the shadows. In the half light, I can see only the person's profile, but it's definitely Beak. As I walk towards him, he glances around, then approaches me warily, like a vegetarian sizing up a pot pie. What are you staring at? You must be Beak Norris. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's me. But I ain't smelled you before. Who are you? I'm a friend of Chelsea Bando. You told me I could probably find you nosing around up here. Yeah, yeah, Chelsea, good egg, nice looker. So, uh, what do you want? She said you might give me a lead on who robbed Rook's pawn shop. Maybe yeah, maybe no. What you gonna give me for the info? Okay, I can use this. My nose has started sagging lately. Makes it hard to breathe. Now, what kind of info are you looking for, huh? I think he's dead. And I'll bet Mick Flam had something to do with it. Word was the two of them were smuggling illegal novelty items from Hong Kong and Rusty Cross Flam. Ever since Rusty disappeared, Flam has had a terrible fear of clowns. Bozophobia. I once saw Flem pretty drunk, and he said he had nightmares of Rusty's ghost coming back to haunt him from the grave. He was completely terrified. Oh, I'm nobody. I just try to keep my nose clean and my ear to the ground. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Or was that vice versa? The bracelet is the bait Mick Flem uses for the pawn shop robberies. Rook's pawn shop was robbed by a two-bit crook named Mick Flem. He and his girlfriend have knocked off half a dozen pawn shops over the past month. The girl goes to a pawn shop and hawks a bracelet for a decent amount of cash. Then Flem breaks into the pawn shop and steals the bracelet, along with anything else he finds. I can't help you there. I know a little about him. Runs a pretty successful P.I. business. He lets his wife run the pizza joint. I don't know what he does. Though I've heard some things about who he does. <laughs> you can tell he drinks a lot by that snozz of his. She runs that pizza place with her husband, Sal. I don't know much about her. A true Italian knows, though. I haven't got any info on that. I can't help you there. Chelsea! Hmm, smart girl and a real looker to boot. She's got a cute little nose. Well, that's not good. Yeah.
Oh, great. The Acne Warehouse is the former Snow White Dry Cleaning Building. Nobody's used this place in a while. Yeah, looks like someone's locked the door. Well, that's... Congratulations. Now you'll have to carry a stick around to keep the women off you. Oh, come on, Mavie. Quit finding me. What do you need? McFlam's rap sheet would take a day to read. He's a fat scum. And he's an idiot to boot. That's why he's always getting caught. He's been busted for burglary, mail fraud, arson, you name it. Everyone knows he operates out of the Snow White warehouse, but don't tell him. Well, that's not good. If this is Mick Flem's hangout, he'll probably be back soon. I better try and set some sort of trap for him. Hmm. Well, that's not gonna work. This must be the power box for Well, that's not... Hmm. The sound is coming. The heavy footsteps I hear must be phlegm. Luckily, my rusty trap's all set. I'll need to find a hiding place as close as possible to the pulley control box. When phlegm least expects it, I'll throw the pulley lever and bring Rusty back from the dead. If this the rust
Hmm. A heavy. Mick ran off without his keys. I'll bet at least one of these will come in handy. The strong box is too sturdy to break open. I'll need the key. Hmm, what do we have here? Unless I miss my guess, this is jade. And it's good quality, too. Dark rusty clown doll looks pretty spooky dangling up there in the dark. I'm telling you, it's impossible. It can't be done. I've tried everything. The prophecy is very clear. We can't go on until this step is completed. Surely your unique skills give you opportunity? My ability? has gotten us nowhere. Capricorn got there before me. They're always one step ahead of me. It's like they can read my mind. We can't let them stop us. Maybe we can use your skills on someone else. I've made inquiries. And if he hasn't gotten himself killed, maybe he's just what we need. Murphy. Tex Murphy. I feel better today than I've felt in a long time. Boy, did I stun Rook when I walked in and handed him that bracelet. Okay, so getting the bracelet back doesn't make me detective of the year, but it does stimulate the confidence glands. Maybe I can succeed at this business and turn my career around. But if I'm gonna do that, I better do something about my fax machine. Who knows how many new opportunities I've missed to show the world my greatness. personal credit card. I'll need this to get in the electronics shop next door.
Well, that's not... This electronic shop outlet has just moved into the neighborhood. I've heard that the manager's name is Ham Underwood. Everyone knows they sell overpriced junk, but it is conveniently located. This is something called Future Crate. It must hold more stuff than plain old crates. Hmm, a teeny disc tote box. Too bad they quit making teeny disc ten years ago. Yum, an imitation chocolate keyboard. The perfect Valentine gift for that special computer nerd. Various connectors, accessories, and doodads. Probably there for decoration. Now that's interesting. Looks like an alien pineapple. Ooh, Plan 9 flying saucers. Very cool. Looks like a core sample from an old sofa. Hmm, an old 1286 with an ancient super duper Wowzer VGA monitor. Well, that's either a model of a space station or a four pack of mineral water. I don't know what this is, but it's got a real nice handle. This must be the new 10-key laser printer pop-up toaster unit. The fax machine's so outdated, it doesn't even have a brand name. And it's better than nothing. I can't get that while the force field is up. Oh, a drive through teller tube. Everyone should have at least one of these around the house. Looks like some kind of space chicken. Oh, the Rodent Tracker 8000, just like on TV. Because household pests never build up an immunity to bullets. Hmm, a teeny disc tote box. Too bad they. Yum, a nimit. A remote control flying saucer, huh? It's so old, it's turning to dust. Shelves and shelves of useless, overpriced products. Yum. Kids' infrared visors. They stopped making these about 50 years ago and they're still overstocked. A uh, Vox TV with remote crab speakers. I don't know what this is, but it's got a real nice handle. How's it going? You here to do more shopping? No, I came by to get some information from you. <laughs> I sell gadgets, not information. Feel free to look around, but the only questions I answer are about the merchandise. As soon as I hook fax. up the new fax machine, a fax prints out. Oh, finally. Maybe this is a real case. The kind you get paid for. Ask away. Wish I could have. Oh. Let me show you my investigative abilities. Then you'll be really impressed. Oh, I'm sure I would. But I just don't date my customers, especially ones with no money. Hey, I don't like being broke. Why don't you lay off the insults and help me find some work? <laughs> Sorry, Dex. Look, I'm just kidding you. You know I'll tell you if I hear of anything. I'd appreciate it.
So, is there something you came to ask me about? He's only been here a few weeks, and I don't know much about him. Wish I could help you there, Tex. I heard that Ardo. Hiya, Murphy! I haven't got... I can't have... What now, Murphy? I don't know. I don't know. Hey, Murphy, guess what? We got the guy who robbed those pawn shops. Turned himself in. Can you believe it? Kept babbling something about a clown coming back from the dead to haunt him. <laughs> Actually, I know all about it. Because I'm the one who put the fear of Rusty in him. Sure, sure you did, Murphy. What can I do for you? Sorry, Murphy. Can't help you with that. He was a wacko who had a kid show on TV years ago. He quit the TV biz and opened a novelty shop somewhere in the mutant section. Word is, he got involved with the illegal novelty trade and got himself killed. He disappeared months ago. Beak's a real valuable contact on the street, but he doesn't come cheap. Of course I know the Colonel. Didn't he teach you the business? He's the best P.I. I've ever worked with. No offense. We scratch each other's backs. He's been busy with some cases, and I haven't seen him for a few weeks. Jeez, Tex, you think I know about everything? Sorry, Murphy. Can't help you with... Jeez, Tex, you... Sorry. Jeez. Countess Rainier. That name smacks of money. Hopefully she doesn't want to hire me to find her lost poodle. As I land my speeder, I see my dream house only bigger. The butler is a tall, thin man, about 70. He tells me the Countess is expecting me and shows me into a large, lavishly furnished drawing room. And the Countess Rainier. Please, have a seat. Thank you. You know, I pictured you being, well, older and heavier. No one is born old, Mr. Murphy. Now, shall we discuss our business while we're still young? Oh, by all means. Pardon my interruption. Your services have been recommended to me by a trusted friend who prefers to remain anonymous. Suffice it to say that your unique abilities are what I need right now. Um, which of my unique abilities are you referring to? I'm sure you have many unique abilities. The one I would hire you for is your talent of locating people and things. I've been told this talent has made you some friends and many enemies. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Candace, but wasn't it Roy Rogers who once said, you can't please all the people all the time? Save your homespun humor for a more gullible woman. What I'm asking you to do may make you very unpopular with some people. Uh, exactly how unpopular are we talking here? Let me give you some background information, then you can decide for yourself. Some time ago, a family heirloom was stolen from this bungalow. I do keep most of my valuables on my estate in Europe, but on this visit, I brought the piece to show a friend. Within hours of my arrival, I found it stolen, and I have made extensive inquiries trying to retrieve it, but I found out nothing. Well, I'm sure you have more resources, talking about cash, than I do. You should be able to buy all the information you need. 
What makes you think that I can help you? Oh, I don't. I remembered what my friend had told me about you after I had exhausted every other option. You know, referring to me as your last option could automatically double my fee. I already planned on paying you much more than your usual fee. I'm a wealthy young woman, Mr. Murphy. To give you an idea, the stolen artifact alone is worth more money than you could earn in ten lifetimes. Oh, we'll see about that when I win the clearinghouse sweepstakes. <laughs> How quaint. Let's not waste any more time. I need some work done, and I'll pay you well for it. Well, in my experience, getting paid well is a relative term. Your obsession with money is appalling. Oh, I have any number of appalling traits, but I am a good P.I. Well, if you prove to be as good as you think you are, I'll pay you a $30,000 finder's fee. Well, let me think about it. Okay, I'll do it. In fact, I'll even mow your lawn at no charge. Try to control yourself, Mr. Murphy. <laughs> I'll expect you to focus all of your energies on this job, and the methods you use to retrieve the artifact are of no interest to me. But as more time elapses, the less likely it is that the item will be found, and for that reason, I must require you to find it and to return it to me within one week. And after that, there will be no finder's fee available to you. Do you pay time and a half after 40 hours? <laughs> that's, a, that's a joke. <laughs> I have stated my conditions. As to the artifact itself, it is a beautiful statuette made of crystal and shaped in the form of a bird. It has been in my family for countless generations, and as I said, it is extremely valuable. There are many collectors who would stop at nothing to own it. Whoever stole the statuette would undoubtedly have gone to the black market and offered it to the highest bidder. Hmm, I think I saw that statuette you're talking about. Someone was selling it on the home shopping network. Boy, I had no idea it was so expensive. You make jokes, but you cannot possibly know how rare and valuable the statuette is. And now that you have all the necessary information, we'll end this charming visit. Don't bother contacting me until you have the statuette in your possession. And if you are successful in your search, it could change my opinion of you considerably. My valet will give you a retainer of $1,000 on your way out. Goodbye, Mr. Murphy. I didn't tell the Countess, but I would have done damn near anything for $30,000. Now I've got to find a link to the black market. How hard can it be? Back again, Amber. Sorry. Maybe I have a I can't have What can I get for you, handsome? How about a big plate of linguine with my own special sauce? <laughs> I think your sauce might be a little too rich for me. I just want to ask a couple of questions. So, can he opened that radioactive shack across to the street? I haven't spoken with him yet.
what can I get you? He's one of the few norms besides you who's eaten here. Seems like a typical cop. A little dim. And not too concerned about what happens in the mutant sections of town. Sorry, m Sorry. Ham just opened the electronics place a while ago. He's come by for lunch a couple of times. Usually orders the brains and eggs platter. On the top floor, I heard that Ardo. Judas Murphy, can't you find something else to do besides bothering me? I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about that. I don't know. I don't know. Ask away. Oh. Sorry. Wish I could. Oh. The sound is coming from up on the landing. Looks like the on-off switch can... My shiny but cheaply made fax machine. The dusty credenza I've got serves only one purpose, and that's to keep the dust off the floor. What now? I've been okay. Little indigestion now and again, but nothing serious. Can't help you with it. Gee! It was. Geez! Sorry. I like to stand by these, waiting for a glimpse of Rita. What's going on? Apparently, it's a real hot item. The top commodities dealer in the city is named Franco Franco. He probably either has the statuette or knows who has it.
Wish I could help you there, Tech. He's... Back again. He's a big time crook. Deals with stolen and illegally imported merchandise, especially Jade. Can't help you with that. Hiya, Murphy! I've heard his name in connection with some smuggling and illegal importing. I don't know anymore. I haven't... Anyone with a hunker like that can't be all bad. Malden's no rocket scientist. But I hear that he's not on the take. I've helped him out a couple of times, so he leaves me alone. I heard... Ask away. Oh. Sorry. Too bad you don't like fresh brains, mate. Hot off the grill. Sorry, my f Sorry. <laughs> you look hot. I prefer to. My shot. Ah. I don't know how you're going to find him, but if you do, be careful. What else can I help? You know, I subscribe to a trade paper called Jewelry Weekly. In the last issue, it seems to me I saw an advertisement by someone named Franco, who was looking to buy Jade. There wasn't anything of interest in the trade paper, so I threw it out. It's probably still in the trash can out back. Big time crook. Deals with a lot of uh, smuggled artifacts and the like. He's pretty well connected with the mob and black market here in San Francisco. Being a movie buff, I've heard of the Alhambra Theater, though I heard it was closed down years ago. Sure enough, it's boarded up, but one of the back doors is unlocked. As soon as I step inside, two lugs the size of refrigerators grab me. I tell them that I have something for Mr. Franco and one of them walks off. He comes back a minute later and escorts me into the main theater. A Buster Keaton flick is playing. The place is empty except for a man sitting by himself near the front of the theater. Welcome. 
Mr. Murphy. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Franco. Tell me, do you do most of your business in dark theaters? How and where I do my business is not your concern, Mr. Private Eye. As I'm sure you know, I'm strictly a legitimate businessman. Yeah, you may be legit, but I understand you're pretty jaded. Oh yes, that I am. Speaking of which, did you bring the item? Ah, a lovely specimen. It will make a fine addition to my collection. Now, I will answer one question to the best of my knowledge. What can you tell me about the Countess Renier? Only this. I never heard of her. There. Now I fulfill my part of the bargain. Don't contact me again. Unless, of course, you find another fine piece of jade. You know the way out. Where am I? Is this a dream? Not quite, Murphy. You are dead. Dead? Wow. Then you're the... The big P.I. in the sky? That's right, Murphy. But now is not the time for you to be here. Your life must be restored so that you may fulfill a higher purpose. There is a vast and malignant evil at work on the Earth, and fate, for some reason that even I cannot fathom, has chosen you to oppose it. But why me? I'm no more thrilled about it than you are. Nevertheless, your fate has been decided. I will do what I can to help you make your way, but only you can fulfill your destiny. Now, go back and try not to get yourself killed again. You will know when the time is at hand. I know, I know. I blew my chance to get a lead from Franco by not asking the right question. Clearly a violation of PI Rule 3. Pretty please, give me another try. Well, okay. If this is Mick... The Rusty Dog... The Heavy Foot... This electronic sh
have a fax. You have a fax. Sure. It was a one. Can it? Hey, you mate. What's going on? What now? Big time crook. Hey, I'm I've heard it. Back again. Judas, man. You know. Uh Being a move. Uh, now. Can I ask two questions? No. There. Now I fulfill. There's a statuette in the shape of a bird that recently came onto the market. You know who has it? Hmm. I know the statuette you're referring to. There were several bidders for it. But I believe it ended up in the hands of Eddie Ching. I can say no more about it. There. Now I've fulfilled my part of the bargain. Don't contact me again. What now? Ching's a dangerous customer. He's responsible for half the crime in the city. Pretty sure he owns the police commissioner. We've been told to lay off him. Hey, mate! You didn't hear me say this, but Eddie Ching owns this whole section of the city. I don't discuss that name, and either should you, if you want to keep breathing. What else can I hear? Ching is a big man around here, with eyes and ears everywhere. If you go around asking questions about Eddie Ching, you'll find yourself sleeping with a fish real soon. Ask. 
Oh, don't know what the What? I've heard his name, but I don't know anything about him. What the can? I think. Sorry. I heard that. I had a set of stacking rings just like this one when I was a little P.I. Hmm. Even has a small hole in it, just like the rings I... Sink must have been used for developing photos. Not well, that's not gonna. This pure mountain sp Well, that's not- I had a set of stacking rings just like this one when I was a little P.I. Hmm. Even has a small hole in it, just like the rings I had. Man, fill one of these with water and you can chuck it a mile. again. That place is home to more major crime figures than any other place on the planet. Eddie Ching lives there on the entire top floor. Looks like no one's home. This is gonna be easier than falling off a horse. This window doesn't want to open up. Maybe if I... Whoa! Whoa! When I stopped bouncing off the awning two floors below Ching's place, I realized it'll take more than sheer strength to get into the apartment. Luckily, I noticed something that might help as I bounced by. A sticker on Ching's window said, Security System Installed by Underwood Incorporated.
This is something... Again, eh? Huh? What can I do for you? I understand you installed the security system at the Knickerbocker building. Yeah, I did, but my contract included a clause that I wouldn't talk about the job. Well, okay. I guess I'll just go light a cigar with this hundred dollar bill I got in my pocket. I get paid well enough for my work. You can take your lousy bribe and get the hell out of my store. M doesn't want to tell I'm doing some PI work and I think you could give me some information. I've got nothing to say. I keep my nose clean and I work in a confidential business. I'm sure you can understand. Yeah? I'm in the confidential business, too. Say, why don't we swap trade secrets? Apparently, you have some trouble... I'm... I'm... Yeah. Look, I'm a PI. I need some information. I'll keep my mouth shut if you help me out. I've got nothing... Understand this, bucko. Either you talk to me or you'll be brushing your teeth in a little cup by your bed. Look, wise guy, I've got some powerful friends. If you walk out of here right now, I'll pretend you never came in. How can I help you, Tex? That's where Eddie Ching lives. That's all I know. You didn't hear me say that. I heard that. Ask away. Sorry. I apologize to Ham for prying into his business and tell him that I'm really just a lonely guy looking for some pleasant conversation. He senses a kindred spirit and I start my subtle interrogation all over again. I'm doing some P.I. I've got... I... I understand. Really? Well, sometimes. Here, let me see if I can find one of my business cards. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> don't worry about it. I always misplace my business cards, too. Uh, what types of security systems have you worked with? A few years ago, I handled the motion sensor alarm at the Law and Order Party. I've heard that's a neat system. <laughs> but it's nothing compared to the one I just put in. I'll have you know that I've beaten every security system ever made. Well, after I installed this system, I tried to beat it, but I couldn't. First, the only possible way to enter the building would be to land on the roof and rappel down. Then, you'd have to cut through the LCD alarm glass. Well, that's not too hard. In fact, I, I sell a laser blade here that would do it. But once you're inside, every room is flooded with a net of heat and motion sensing beams that could turn an elephant into a brick of carbon. Believe me, it's burglar-proof. Uh, listen, this system is top secret, so uh, let's just keep this between us.
Armed with a chintzy electronic shop laser blade, I land my speeder on the roof of the knickerbocker. Hoping for the best, I repel down the side and pull out the laser blade. The laser beam cuts through the LCD glass like it was butter. I gingerly crawl through the hole in the window and find myself inside Eddie Ching's library. Either I'm exaggerated or the laser fields aren't turned on. This must be my lucky day. Hey there. Well, this lamp proves that art can be both beautiful and functional. Man, this security system is tough. My brilliant shot didn't turn off the beams, it just popped open the power box. Hmm, looks like there's a lever that needs to be pulled down. Hopefully my old horseshoe tossing skills haven't left me. I'll need to find something fairly heavy. Well, that's not... As soon as the ring hits the lever, the laser net shuts down. Now I should have the run of the apartment. If the statuette's here, Ching probably has it well hidden. I think I'd better leave that lever right where it is. I don't like surprises. It's a fun... Ooh la la, check out that sexy swimwear. Mom teaching kids proper baby handling techniques. How tender. Looks like some kind of goose party. I call this painting, Woman About to Win Skinny Dipping Bet. I see you back again. Man. An extremely dense and heavy Saturnium ball suspended over a gravity pad. Real. Oh, don't. 
Whoa, must be. I see a. There is a Geiger in the terrarium. Little bugger's a land piranha. It's illegal even to own one of these. An ultra safe 8000, huh? Top of the line. Must be v something different about this book. Just call it P.I.'s Instinct. Aha! I knew it. A key. Hey there, little Buddha. Well, that's not gonna... Well, that's not... Well, that's... The solid steel switch lock. Sounds like something big moved back in the library when I used Ching's key on the switch lock. I better go take a look. The solid. There is a Geiger in. Lots. Well, Well, look what's behind the bookcase. A secret room. I love secret rooms. This seems to be a fine rendering of Greco-Roman square dancing. I swear, I have seen this painting before. This one must be the original. Wonder if these barrels are full of some hearty ale. I wish I had time to check them out. Man, who in his right mind would pay big bucks for a painting of flowers? This painting sticks out from the wall more than the others do. This painting sticks out from the wall. Aha! A security card slot. This must be the control for the pedestal where the statuette is. This painting is really... Uh, green. So that's what the ocean used to look like. I'd call this painting Young Boy with Fiddle Asking for Allowance. This sign apparently has something to do with the lever. This must be the Countess Statuette. I guess she wasn't exaggerating when she said how valuable it was. If I try... 
This must be- If I try to reach the statuette with those laser beams on, they'll light me up like a Duralog. Aha! Let's Let's No for No for safe 8000, huh? This Victor These chairs. I doubt I'll be needing this ring again. Her voice. The solid The security card must operate a door panel in the apartment. The security... The security...
This must be the Countess statuette. I guess she wasn't exaggerating when she said I'll value. Like Ching needs to install a better security system. Countess will be glad to get this statuette back, almost as glad as I'll be to take her money. I'll return the statuette to her first thing in the morning. This is a quirk. Well, that's not good. I don't know what I'll do with a small, ravenous Geiger. Oh well, everybody needs a pet. Tired hombre. I can't wait to. Oh, shoot. I go through all that work to get the statuette out of Ching's place and I leave it in the damn speeder. And I didn't even roll up the windows. I am such an idiot. Feels like it's been pounded with a lead pipe. I guess it wasn't a bad dream after all. I wonder how I got here to my office. All I remember is flying pipe and stars. Damn it! After all the trouble I went to to get that stupid statuette, someone just walks up and takes it like candy from a baby. And my wallet's gone too. I hope somebody on the street saw me get jumped. I've got 29,000 reasons to get that crystal bird back. Hopefully I haven't used my tube of miracle facial cream. It should help reduce the swelling and make me look almost human again.